Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Taylor from Microcom Design. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to update the firmware in Microcom's GTX 2.0 satellite data transmitter and logger. The reason for this update is because there is a weak number rollover issue in the GPS receivers. This weak number rollover will occur on midnight of April 6, 2019. Now Microcom has two types of GTXs deployed. There are GTX 1.0s and GTX 2.0s. In the GTX 1.0, if the firmware is not updated before April 6, 2019, the GTX 1.0 will stop collecting data and stop transmitting. Whereas the GTX 2.0 will continue to function as long as power is not removed. So now I can begin demonstrating how to update the GTX 2.0. First we're going to need to go to Microcom's website and download the zip file containing the executable and the hex files. That can be downloaded from this link here, the GTX weak number rollover update. If we click that link, a pop-up will ask you where you want to uh, save the zip file, and you can choose any um, available location. Click the save, and then we can go to that zip file, and we need to unzip the file and extract all the files. Now that all the files have been extracted, you can execute the Microcom GTX upgrade utility. Now that we've got it running, uh, we can see that it's the latest version, 2.18a GPS weak number rollover, down in the lower right hand corner. Next we're going to need to select the COM port, and on this PC I've got a uh, USB dongle set up on COM31. So under the Preferences menu, COM port sub-menu, I need to select the More sub-menu and type in 31 for my COM port. And down in the lower left-hand corner we can see that COM31 has been successfully opened because it says COM31. Next we can check the Enable GPS WNRO Auto File Select with Program checkbox and select the current version. Now I can see that my GPS is my GTX is communicating because the firmware version 2.28 and 4.6 and the serial number 2848 has been populated. Now this confirmation pop-up dialog box asking if we want to program the GTX. Uh, we can select yes and it'll begin programming. Now in the programming process uh, starts with the link being established, the bootloader being initialized, the bootloader synchronization, the firmware erasing, and now we're programming the firmware. Once that's completed for the main processor, the program will complete and the GTX will restart. The same process will need to occur for the TKM as well. It's recommended at this time to uh, document the main and TKM firmware versions and also the serial number. The, in my case, the main started with version 2.28 and the TKM is version 4.6 and my GTX's serial number is 2848. The upgrade process takes about two and a half minutes, so we can just uh, wait around for that to occur.
Now we can see that the main firmware version has completely been uh, upgraded and it's automatically gone on to upgrading the TKM processor next. Now we can see that the firmware versions have been updated to version 2.30 for the main and 5.0 for the TCAM. So it would be a good idea to document that now as well. Uh, the GTX is now ready to be deployed. And remember, if the GTX was programmed in situ or uh, in the field, uh, it will need to be enabled before it will begin making transmissions. The deployment process is discussed in another video. In this video uh, was a condensed version of the information contained in Appendix C of the GTX manual. If you need any more details regarding the upgrade utility, the manual covers all the features, and if you're having any trouble with the uh, GTX, please do not hesitate to call or email. Thank you.